Another day in aviation paradise and Gammy has made a new announcement, a breakthrough announcement on Avgas and you'll meet the most courageous pilot ever on this episode of Taking Off. Hi and welcome to EAA Air Venture. I'm Dan Milliken. We're sponsored and brought to you by Gold Seal, groundschool.com, and Wingfield Aviation, maintenance shop centrally located in Texas. You plane owners, take it to Wingfield. Now here we are, it's a bit of a cloudy day and there is a cloud over whether the famous Wednesday night air show will occur and we're gonna see. But before that, let's take a look at some of the exciting new products that are being offered and announced here at Air Venture. What we have is the head mounted display and as I'm looking through I can basically see my environment and still see the same information that's basically displayed from the iFlight. Biggest challenges I've know I know about with with HUD with HUD displays is the brightness factor when you're up there you know in the direct sunlight. Right. Um, how does this rate with well, that? Well we have we have two controls basically for brightness if you're in a high bright environment and we also have an electronic shutter, an LCD shutter, where we can change the transmissivity of what you're looking through. So you can make it, if it's a very high bright environment, you can make it very dark. You still can see the imagery as uh, well as seeing the outside world. So it's like, world. Uh, like you can turn an ND filter on. Correct, yeah. exactly. And Walter, how does this work with iFly? So we have a customized version of our synthetic vision that's driving that. So instead of a, a solid background, for example, it's a grid, and we're still gonna be able to show you the alerts. Okay, so I have the eye level here connected. I have my leaf blower putting some airflow into the aileron, and you can see as the plane is tilting, the trim tabs are gonna try to maneuver the airplane. Uh, so I have 250 uh, selected here, and depending on what I do, it's gonna try to compensate for that. GAMI has announced a breakthrough new aviation fuel, an unleaded fuel, 100 UL. Look for this to become the standard as they phase out the leaded gas. Uh, on the way back in the airplane, uh, I proposed to Tim, I said, you know, we ought to take a stab at trying to find a fuel chemistry that'll work in place of lead. And two weeks later, uh, we filed our first patent. So fast forward 11 years, and yesterday uh, at the uh, unleaded fuel, uh, Earl Lawrence and some of the uh, trade groups announced that last Friday about 1.19 in the afternoon, the manager at the Wichita Aircraft Certification Office signed the very first ever high octane unleaded uh, fuel approvals for use uh, in general aviation aircraft engine. So here, is the inside of a cylinder at the end of a full-blown FAA uh, endurance run on unleaded avgas on G100 UL. Uh, in the immortal words of one of my friends, Paul Milner, who happens to be sitting here today when he looked at this, wow, that's really clean. He went through all the engines, all the big troublemakers and everything else, unleaded avgas is working with it and it's also supposed to be fungible and that means that you can mix the 100 UL with 100 low lead and it still meet specifications. So that's the really big news from GAMI. All right, in addition to all the airplanes and the cool aviation tools and toys, we had a chance to catch some education. Going on at Oshkosh are super seminars brought to you by people like Dean Brown, air traffic controller, talking to pilots about emergencies. Standing room only at your uh, seminar on uh, in-flight emergencies, but specifically, the title is A New Approach to uh, In-Flight Emergencies. What's new? So what's new is I've been doing research about how controllers can best assist during in-flight emergencies. I'm a controller and a flight instructor. It's caused me to do that research. And while that's been my primary focus, as a result, I picked up a lot of tips in the research about things that pilots can learn from, whether they're interacting with ATC or not. So the forum in part was about how best to interact with ATC during an emergency, in part, whether you're talking to ATC or not, what can you do? All right, as a pilot, give me the top, you know, the top three, four, five ways that would help me in talking to you. Number one, far and away, is just stay calm. Okay. Number two, perhaps in no particular order, 
is verbiage straight out of a section in the Airplane Flying Handbook that's only about VFR and the IMC, but I think it's applicable to all emergencies. And it is recognize and accept how serious the situation is. One of the things that's new that I'm proposing, you, do you have a personal minimums checklist? I do. Okay, it's probably about you, your airplane, and the weather. I want right. to see personal minimums checklist have something else. When would you declare an emergency for yourself, mm. whether you tell ATC or not? In which situations would you treat something as an emergency? A lot of pilots get into situations and they kind of sit on the fence. Well, I don't know if that's an emergency or not. So that's one of the new things for pilots. There's an analog I want to present to controllers as well about ways that pilots might tell us they have a problem. Right. And I want us to treat it as an emergency and just be clear about that. But if you can stay calm, recognize the seriousness, and just control pitch and bank, you're almost guaranteed in almost all situations to have the best possible outcome. Some situations are inherently bad. The air show is in full force right now. You know, aviation is chock full of inspiration, and I had a chance to meet up with one of the most inspirational figures you'll ever find, courageous Jessica Cox, who was born with no arms and yet has managed to become a pilot. It took me about three years uh, to get finally my sport pilot certificate, which is the base level right. of flying, as you know. Um, so for me, it was a logistics of how would the Federal Aviation Administration take to the fact that I wanted to learn and how would, who would want to teach me? And, right. and then of course the logistics of what airplane is going to work for me and how am I going to handle the control? So it all started there uh, many years ago and it was one of the most difficult challenges I'd had to overcome, but definitely worthwhile to be a part of this community and to take to the skies with the freedom and the feeling of being in the air and, and unlimited. <laughs> Tell me about this, what you had to do. I mean, when you started training, did you have to go to the FAA and say, look, I'm going to begin this journey. You guys are going to be with me or against me? Well, you know, what we did was we had to make sure all our ducks were in order and we figured out the best uh, route to go, which was the sport pilot certificate, which meant that my driver's license, which I actually got my driver's license as a teenager, like any other teenager, it served as my medical. So I didn't have to get a medical. And that allowed me to continue to train and, and prove that I could maneuver an airplane safely. Um, so then the question begs, is the FAA going to work with you for your private? You know, I wondered, and many people in my community of supporters really wondered how the FAA would respond. And we have some really great encouraging news uh, from people at the top that have said, you know, if you can do what is what's called a sta statement of demonstrated ability, then you can and you can prove that you can handle the airplane and then then there is no there there shouldn't be a problem <laughs> oh that's awesome okay so now you've got a new project so the air coop has been great and wonderful for you but you've got something new coming tell us about it so that's what this year is all about is telling the world that we are going to do the first ever we're going to design the first ever custom controlled airplane to be flown with feet the base model of the plane is going to be an RV-10. An RV-10. Yes. So we are working with uh, a lot of people who are coming up with designs for the prototype of how to modify the, the controls. Um, and we have communicated with the team over there at Vans. And, and so that's um, so ongoing. So Vans is working directly with you guys. We, we are working with them and how to make this work. So we're excited and, and they're excited and, and we'll see where this goes. So. Okay, you're an inspiration for so many people. You've helped so many people. How can they help you with this project? Oh, we need a <laughs> tremendous help. As you know, and people in aviation know, it's expensive to fly and it's expensive to build your own plane. And we know how this plane is going to inspire so many more people. We need the help to, for people to get on board with helping us fundraise for the airplane, which is going to be about $300,000 for this project. So it's, it's, a big, it's a big project. Where, where would they find you? So if you would like to find out more about this amazing project, the foot-controlled airplane, please go to jessicacox.com and reach out to us there and we will be able to stay in communication. If you have ideas, if you want to help and support, please help us out. You know, it's really fun to meet up with you guys, and it was no different here today as we got to talk to a bunch of you guys over by the stages. And I'll tell you one thing over and over again, you guys missed Christy. So let's check in with Christy and see how she's doing back home with her training. Hey guys, I am super bummed out about missing all the meetups with everybody, but I'm extremely grateful that you guys are checking in on me every day. 
I'm having a blast actually. I'm just having such a great time relearning all of the information, knowing that I'm going to be flying, you know, this awesome jet here in the next couple of months. Um, what makes it even better is that I am paired up with a wonderful group of people who have banded together to ensure each other's success. Airline training can be really intense at times, and it's good to know that we've got each other to lean on. So that's really great. Uh, I really hope to see everybody at OSH next year, but until then, I hope you guys stay safe, have fun, and continue sending out those videos. I'm loving the daily updates. You guys have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, so the air show is wrapping up, and we've got a storm coming in. So they are canceling the Wednesday night, the famous Wednesday night air show. So we're going to close with sights and sounds from the afternoon air show, and I hope you guys can join us tomorrow for the next update from AirVenture. Enjoy.